Okay, folks, it's only a few weeks away, and then it's the 26th of January. Do I have to explain what the 26th of January is? I'm sure I don't have to. We talk about Australia Day. There's going to be a lot of activities here on the island with music, with color run, with heaps of things happening. And as usual, we do have an ambassador. Now, this year, the ambassador doesn't come from Tassie. He is in Tassie doing work. But we go all the way to the Northern Territory. And there we talk to uh, Adam Drake, our ambassador this year. Adam, welcome. Hey, Wade. How are you, buddy? I'm very good. But, uh, now, um, being the ambassador, it's it's like from the Northern Territory. Are you going to dress <laughs> up heavily? Uh, are you going to wear big <laughs> coats? Uh, what are you going to do? Um, mate, I've been hanging down there a fair bit down in Tassie, so it's actually great that I'll get to come down. I've been down in Devonport um, a fair bit, seeing the spirit of Tasmania go past me while I'm on my paddle board in nine degrees. Uh, but it's <laughs> I'm kind of used to it now. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about the weather. I'm super excited about going to King Island because I've actually heard so much about the place. Uh, many of the kids I work with down there have been saying, Adam, you got to get to this place. It's gorgeous. And I got the phone call from the Australia Day Council. They said, Adam, do you want to go to King Island? I said, Definitely. So can't wait to get over to you. Now, you talk about kids. Uh, let's go into a little bit of history. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where, where? Tell us a bit about your life so we get to know you. All right, mate. So I suppose there's a couple of ways we could start, but I generally just lead with my story. And that is nine years ago, I was pretty much a full-blown drunk in a place called Cullen Bay in Darwin. I was under a tree, pretty close to homeless and a mess uh, in my life. I had three bottles of wine in my bag. And I was, you know, pump, some people would say, you know, worth probably not doing much with my life in an absolute mess. And I kind of just slowly started to get my life back together at that point. And I remember I used to always drive past Dondale Detention Center. Now, I'm sure you've heard of it, probably for all the wrong reasons and all the reports about the place. But I used to drive past it. And as I started to get myself sober in my life and get myself going well, I thought, you know what? I really need to do something in there. And so I approached government and said, I want to run a program. And they said, well, what do you want the program to be? And I went, well, what kind of helped me was fitness, theater and hope. And so I'm going to put all that together, call it balanced choice. And I'm going to go in and work with young people who are locked up and um, having a tough time. And that was nine years ago and since then my life has just become so incredible because the kids that I've worked with helped me realize I deserve to be loved because they actually went this guy he comes in he smashes push-ups with us he cares about us he does a quote of the day and so they've filled my life up to the point where you know what I just want to be the best adult I can be for the kids and that's what got me down to you guys down there at Ashley Detention Center. Uh, a few months ago, I got a phone call saying, Drakey, we want uh, the program that you run in Darwin down here. And so I've been running around Ashley Detention Center meeting amazing young kids from Tasmania who have stories that are way more full on than mine. And, you know, I'm proud of them for just getting through life. But if we can support them on their next steps out and make sure they don't return, then that's what I hope for. Well, I go, I do, I do a little bit of mathematics here. I'm not really good at it, but you talk nine years ago. Well, let's say that you got drunk. You have to be 18 before you can get drunk. Then you would only be 27. I'm sure you're not 27. <laughs> so what was before those nine years? There must, something happened there too. Yeah, the heaps, mate. Um, I, I started, I suppose, I finished school on the Gold Coast. I was living at Burley Heads, but I actually grew up down in Melbourne. And in the school that I actually went to, they didn't t teach Indonesian or Chinese. They taught Walpuri, which is uh, you know, the dialect of the crew down in um, Alice Springs and a place called Yuindamu. I was given a skin name from my school and one of the fellows who came out to that school and it was Jabananka. And that meant that I had a place in that community. So I went out to Yuindamu. I started uh, meeting some of the kids out there when I was in year 10. That then took me on travels, but I must admit there was a bunch of stuff that happened. I was an actor for years, for about eight or nine years. I always say I was a really bad actor running around schools with the Queensland Arts Council and Queensland Theatre Company touring shows. Went over to India with a show, did a few dodgy commercials and a few um, little films. But you know what? That wasn't of interest to me. 
Um, I kind of felt that was all about me. So I went, how could I do something with my life where I can actually go and care for people? And we got sent out to a few Aboriginal communities like Arakoon, uh, Palm Island, and then Tennant Creek. And so I picked up my stuff and moved to Tennant Creek. And everyone says, you moved from Burley Heads on the Gold Coast to Tennant Creek. Like, are you crazy? Uh, but some of the most amazing things uh, happened in my life out in Tennant Creek. And from that point, I then moved to Darwin. I only just got myself off the alcohol and started getting myself going well what, nine years ago. And uh, yeah, I've put, all to, put together all the things that helped me get strong. And now I'm able to pass some of that on to some of the amazing kids I get to work with. So there's a few uh, little stories there for you. <laughs> now, you were talking about uh, the, the other side. It's like in jail, people always have a bad picture. Now, if you really talk about bad pictures, we had the situation uh, for the last 12 months in the Ashley Centre where you have worked. Um, can you imagine that people have that bad picture automatically when people think jail, oh, you're a criminal, you deserve that, and that's it? Yeah, look, I understand um, that people have that, especially if you've been, been a victim of some of that stuff. That's really difficult when it becomes very personal um, for you. What I do know, though, is that when you lean into things you don't understand, then you're a chance to actually balance your opinion and to be able to gather an informed one. And that's, that's all, you know. I, I went to communities, Aboriginal communities, because I knew nothing about it. And I sat around Australia listening to people with their judgments of Aboriginal people. And you know what? Some of the most amazing human beings I've ever met are out in these communities on the homelands in Nullumboy or um, down in Tennant Creek where I go or Elliott Community, all around Australia. And then people have these opinions about these evil kids or these kids who are running amok on the streets. And you go in and meet them and they've been homeless for two years and living on a tent. And of course they're stealing food because you know what? No one ever bothered to open their door and give them a home. So like, let's get both sides of a story before we label somebody or, or, or give our opinion on them. So you're almost saying leave the judging to the judge when they come to court. There it is. <laughs> and well, I just think if you judge people or label people, it's kind of uh, easy. It's easy to label. Lean in, do some work, and then if you've got an opinion, okay, offer it. But gather both sides of it before you start, you know, uh, labelling you know, some of these young people. I, you know, the love that some of these kids have given me over the years and believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself, uh, you'll be very surprised. And I, I always tell the story, you know, about when I was in a place called, uh, it's actually Gun Gun Community, and it's up East Arnhem Land, Darling Boy, and all these different homelands. and one day I was running a workshop because we run these fitness workshops and theatre workshops and I'd finished it and I was feeling a bit proud going, oh, that was a good workshop. Oh, I felt good. And this little kid, he would be three or four, he walks up to me and he puts his hands up in the air like this to me. Oh, what do you do when a kid lifts their hands up to you? Well, you pick them up. So I picked the kid up, put him on my lap and he opens a book. He points to a snake and he says, Buppy, Buppy, Buppy. And I said, what, Buppy? The snake and he's like bapi ah in yongu bapi means snake then he shows me a crocodile and he goes baru baru and here i am being taught by a three-year-old and i just went you know what don't ever get too far ahead of yourself and think you know everything because even a three-year-old does it help you uh adam that uh having been let's call it on the darker side side of life and having lived the, the real life if you want to call it like that <laughs> does that make you a better? Does that make you a better educator? As in, because you know you have experienced. Look, I, I don't encourage people to, if they haven't had a dark life, to go out and gather one. Oh, no, <laughs> no, I understand. But yeah, I I do say, you know, that unless you've experienced, someone, one of the kids actually in Ashley the other day gave me a quote, and it was something along the lines of, "It's only in the darkness that you see how bright the stars are." And I went, wow, that's beautiful, man. And he was like, he shared it with me. And I, I just thought it's so true. You know, sometimes it takes getting to those dark patches in your life to understand that there is beauty and there's some great things to be ahead of you. And 
you know, we talk about hope theory, we talk about learned optimism, but really all we're talking about with the kids is how we can give them a better future and walk alongside them and hope they start making some better choices with their life. Like that's all we can hope for. Now I noticed that uh, because often what you find is when, when say kids have been hurt and, and have lived a hard, difficult life. And when they're young, uh, often part of their own defense is being very self-centered, not in a negative sense, but they look after themselves where you in one way in your program with balanced choice, you try to create teamwork. Is that one of the harder battles to get them out of their, their own little cocoon and <laughs> self-defense to become part of a team? Uh, how do you trust when everything in your life hasn't been, you know, worthy of trust or you've kind of given up on it. And, you know, I remember many times when I go into a prison for the first time and I try to run team building and connection workshops, you're like, you know, what's your chance in here? But when you show the best of yourself to people, people will show the best of themselves. And then if you can do that in a group setting, I believe you're a chance to actually build hope in people again, that people are okay and people are good. Uh, this is going to probably be a bit controversial, but I say I still haven't met a bad person. And I've been to some, like we've worked in, you know, Port Phillip Prison in Melbourne. We've worked in uh, all around Australia. We've been over to America with people who have been locked up for 48 years. And I've met people who made really bad choices with their life, but I still haven't met somebody who is a really bad human being. How many, uh, because with this program, if you travel the world even and go around the nation, where do you find that your program differs, say, from other similar programs? Yeah, I, do, I suppose the theatre side of it, like I don't know too many groups that use theatre and fitness. And then you've got the hope theory behind it. And we talk about PERMA, which you know, if I'm going to break that down, it's about, it's about relationships and connection with, with young people and how we do that. So... It's about having positive emotions, engagement, relationship, meaning, and achieving something with those young people. But how is it different? Well, I don't know too many groups. I know groups that do fitness. I know groups that do theatre. I know counsellors and people that come in and talk about positive psychology. But all of that melded together, then you go where the young person needs you to go rather than where you think the young person needs to go. And so... A lot of the time, like when I turned up to Ashley Detention Center and Dondale and other places like that, it has to start with hardcore fitness because the kids want to get their energy out. You've got to regulate their emotions. You've got to get them breathing properly. But then I realized that they also need to know how to get their emotions under control. So we start doing things like box breathing and just helping slow them down so that when they get angry, they've got tools when I was a young fella, I didn't have enough tools to know how to deal with anger and jealousy. So I'd just act out. But it's our responsibility as adults. It's, it's actually quite symbolic. You've got a lighthouse and that image there because that's our job as adults. You know, we're meant to shine so that all the kids who are like the boats, they don't end up on the rocks. But if we shine them into the rocks, that's where they're going to end up. So it's our job to actually keep them safe. And so we actually got to set that example with our lives. And I suppose, mate, for 38 years, I've been setting a really bad example. But what I am proud of is that I've started to turn that around and, you know, shine my light a bit better than I was. Now, coming to, uh, that's very interesting uh, to say the least, Adam, uh, absolutely brilliant in my head off to you, that uh, coming to Australia Day, um, you're going to be our ambassador. Uh, I'm almost thinking then that you work so much with, with Indigenous people, and we all know the controversy around Australia Day and the date should be changed. It should be completely wiped out and gone. So you have experienced that, I'm sure, with Indigenous people. Yeah. At the same time now, you're an Australia Day ambassador. That uh, sort of surprises me a little bit. Oh, it surprises me a little bit. I, I suppose I was nominated in 2019 for, you know, Australian of the Year up here in the NT. And so with that came the opportunity to be an ambassador. What I'm an ambassador for is people. What I'm an ambassador for is 
getting together with people. Uh, I've shared it before, but I think Mother Teresa got it right when she said, when she said, sometimes we forget we belong to each other. So I feel like it's important for us to get together. It's important for us to try and work out how we best celebrate this amazing place that we all live in. And if it happens to be on this date at the moment, then that's where it is. But I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. I could sit there and protest and walk down the main street here in Darwin or come down to Tassie and protest. But what I would prefer to do is get involved in a system and see if we can change it from the inside out and work that out together as we lean into all different cultures that celebrate this day for different reasons and also mourn this day. So I'm just very mindful, but I just want to be a part of hanging out with you guys down there and experiencing the day with you guys and learning a bit more about Australia and learning a lot about King Island because I've never been there before. Do you think it's very different than, than sort of the small communities you work and live in? Because we are a small community here too. Yeah, that's a great question because I've noticed there are big differences between the communities that I go to here and then say Tassie, um, just as in people are similar, but the buildings are a whole lot older in Tassie. There's still, there's a real history there. There's a different history up here in Darwin where I live and, you know, Cyclone Tracy blew a lot of stuff away. And so I, I love coming to Tassie because I feel like I'm learning every time I come there. But one thing I know is whether it's LA where we went earlier this year, whether it's over in my wife's country in Mauritius, people generally are amazing and they've got a lot to teach you. And I always say everyone's got a story and it deserves to be heard. So I'm coming down there because I want to learn more about your community, your people and see how that connects with, you know, myself, balanced choice. But ultimately, I just want to get to know more people because you're all libraries. I, I view people as libraries and if you keep going to the same library you're just going to keep learning the same thing it's time for me to go to a few different libraries now it's it's you sort of almost answered the question already earlier in the in the piece but um well, i ask it again it's like what what does australia day mean to you yeah it's been a day of sadness for me in some ways then when i was nominated for that award it actually made me because I always say back in my early years, it was very much Bay 13, cricket, MCG, um, green and gold, zinc on my face and uh, lots of tug of war games. And that was kind of what it was, barbecues. Then when I started doing the work in the community, I started to hear this other story about Invasion Day and how much it's, it's hurt the people in communities and it's a day to mourn and not celebrate. And so my heart went out to that. And so now I sit in this place where I go, whoever I'm with on that day, I'll be where they are and I want to hear their story because I'm still trying to work out what we should do with the day. But if I sit at home on that day and just sit on my couch, I'm not doing anything about taking it forward. By going to all these places and learning more stories, I'm a chance to be a part of whatever we move this day to, whether we keep it where it is or whatever that'll be. So... At this point in time, I'm torn on this day. But I also love to learn more from people. So that's all I want to do is you know, come down and learn from you guys. And you know, hopefully I've got some stuff too that you guys might want to hear about. So that's cool. Well, you're not going to sit at home, uh, Adam. You're going to be on a plane, on a small plane. You're going to come to King Island. And we're looking forward to catch up with you on Australia Day. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, great to meet you, Wade. I can't wait to actually hang out with you, mate, and uh, get to know everybody down there. So thanks, brother.